Scoobies, why I love them and why you should love them too. Hello everybody, how's it going? Now, what is a goby? A goby is a member of a family of small fishes living in the ocean, in freshwater, in brackish water. They are one of the most diverse families of fishes and the biology of goby condenses a lot of marine biology, a lot of evolution in one. So this is why I'm fascinated by these fishes. Let me tell you for a few minutes what's so amazing about these gobies. Now, this is a very small fish here. It's less than a centimeter in length. Same with this one, belonging to the genus Iniota. They are among the smallest vertebrates in existence. So, there's no animal with a backbone which is smaller than these gobies. Most interestingly, they live in a symbiosis with shrimp. Not all gobies do, about 120 species of gobies share a burrow with a shrimp and this is a fantastic interaction between two small animals where most people would think, well, there's not so much going on in these brains, but in fact there is. So what's happening is the shrimp is building this burrow. Here you can see the shrimp excavating, but the shrimp does not have very good eyesight. So the goby motionlessly sits at the entrance of this burrow, stares at the environment, looks for predatory fishes, looks for scuba divers really, which might scare them, and it communicates what it, what it sees to the shrimp. How does it do that? By quickly wiggling its tail and by quickly wiggling its fins. So you can see the antenna of the shrimp is almost always in contact with the goby when it comes out. Beautiful fish in these gobies. There are amazing colors, there are amazing shapes. You know, there are these red dots on this goby of the genus Cryptocentros. You know, they are really as if that had been designed by Dali. Obviously they haven't, they evolved. As you can see, the eyes of this goby are very high up on its head, which is quite typical for animals which live on sandy plains. So this extends the field of view of this fish by quite a bit. Now, this is one of these burrows which the shrimp built, the goby is retracting. You can see the shrimp is actually quite clever in arranging little pieces of coral rubber. He's like a master uh, mason who is building a romantic uh, arc. Lots of things still are known about goby. So this individual of shrimp goby changes the color of the crest of its eyes. You know, this is really quite something. So it's, it's unknown why this is happening. Okay, so what's happening if there's actually a predatory fish coming, like a sand perch here, very quick escape of the goby into the burrow and the shrimp, but the shrimp goby stay in there safe from a predator. Here you have a beautiful goby of the genus van der Horste. Again, you have a shrimp working to excavate the shared burrow, and then you see this hopping movement, and this is actually a social signal to other gobies nearby. Again, there's a close-up, you know, beautiful fish. Look at this, psychedelic dots. And what you can see in this close-up also is how, how they are breathing, how they're respirating. Now, this is a very rare shrimp goby of the genus Myosina, which I found for the first time in the Philippines. Okay, look at the colors of this fish. I mean, really the most flamboyant 1960s carpet design. I wouldn't have come up with more uh, mind-blowing patterns. So these fish are really amazing to photograph and film. They're not easy to photograph and film. They're so small that you really have to be very careful in approaching them. A careless scuba diver and underwater videographer or photographer will often miss a lot of these beautiful gobies because they're shy, they're small, they're very skittish, they're easily scared. These shrimp gobies would then retract into this burrow 
as I've discussed before, other gobies would hide in between coral crevices and you wouldn't see them if you're not approaching them very carefully and if you're not swimming in a very controlled manner. Very interesting evolutionary matters which happened here. These shrimp gobies, which again is only a subset of all gobies, they have evolved twice. So there are two independent lineages of gobies which have uh, transitioned from a solitary lifestyle to this shrimp goby lifestyle to engaging in this mutualistic symbiosis. So here we have a goby of the genus Oplompus in the back and then I am using a time lapse and you will see how a shrimp goby emerges from this burrow. Here he comes. They're very careful in assessing the environment. In this case, I placed my camera in front of the goby and the shrimp goby then uh, makes the way free for the shrimp and their life at the surface continues. They find each other with a very sophisticated system where the shrimp basically smells out the goby and the goby looks at the patterning on the back of the shrimp and the goby also looks at the size of the entrance. So if the entrance is too small or too big, it's probably the wrong species of shrimp. Again, you can see how the antenna of the shrimp is in touch with the body of the goby. So these are two only very distant related animals and they are engaging in this very sophisticated communication system. You know, real subtleties of the movement of the fins of the goby tell the shrimp what's going on on the outside. You can see this alphate shrimp have unevenly sized claws. So this is a feature of that family of shrimp, which is quite unique to them. So this unique strategy of living in the symbiosis has allowed these shrimp gobies and the shrimp to colonize otherwise very hostile, dangerous, featureless sandy plains where there would be no way of hiding from predators. Again, a beautiful little goby. Look at the patterns on its gill cover. And yes, so here it's pumping uh, oxygenated water over its gill. It needs to do that because it's not moving fast. It's uh, standing still. So here we have, again, we have footage in slow motion of a shrimp goby escaping when a predator approaches. And here the predator is me. Normally I don't like to mess with marine life, but the goby will get over it. A few minutes later it will emerge from its burrow again. Other gobies live in the mountain creeks of tropically and subtropically oceanic islands. This is a fascinating fauna. These gobies live there as adults as juveniles stay in the ocean and then they migrate up these mountain creeks. So this was filmed on Negros Island in the Philippines and here you see two male gobies engaging in a contest. Who owns a little territory? These are grazers, so they are feeding off these very rich uh, mats of algae and of the small animals which are living in this algae. They are very numerous, so in a healthy mountain stream in the tropics, you will find lots of these gobies. Again, beautiful animals. Look at these metallic greens and blues. So these are really, these are jewels, these are really diamonds of nature. And if you have the patience and if you have the eye to find them, you will be rewarded with amazing observations out in nature. At a, at a very small scale, which a lot of people would probably miss. On top of that, I have written a book, The Lives of Gobies, which is just about to come out with Asian Geographic, really covering a lot of aspects of Gobi biology. Get it, you won't regret it. It's a great Christmas present and lots of popular science. It's written for the interested layperson. See you next time.